Yeah, and there we go. The SK Telecom bands. scarves. Yep. Coming out here in our audience today as we there get we into go. picks and bands. And guess what's been banned? It's Nidalee. Gee, that's a shock. But not a big one. I, I'm a bit surprised that they would ban that Nidalee because we know Faker can play it as well. And Zed and Ari taken out immediately from the pool. Renekton down also. So SK yeah. Telecom going to be having a very different strategy. Will they take the Shen again this game? And no, oh, Zyra, Zyra first right. pick for Mondu, the support of choice. It's understandable. Mondu is probably the best Zyra in Korea right now, you know, if, if not the world. He's a fantastic Zyra player. But at the same time, once in a while, he has, like, really awful moments. But I think overall, he's a very good Zyra player. Yeah, that Ezreal being grabbed away, as well as that Elise, no surprise nope. there. And I don't think they're going to. That's not right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's not right, huh? Not allowed. Monte Cristo says no. That is the Listen. that is the wrong answer to picks and bands, though. That's right. Incorrect. I'm gonna give him an F. Okay. F for Faker. Yeah. That. Now the question is, what is Piglet going to run? Of course, Caitlyn and Vane, his go-to champions. Yep. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see either one of those. Yeah, Caitlyn probably going to come in here just because that Caitlyn Zyra lane is absolutely terrifying and probably SK Telecom wants to make sure they can win the laning phase pretty handily this time around. Gives you a lot of good options. So Bengi going on the staple Lee Sin pick probably again. It is open and available and his pick of choice uh, yeah. as of the World Championships. Used to play a lot of Jarvan, used to play a lot of Elise, but he's Switched it up, his main now definitely the Blind Monk. And there we go, actually, we will see the Vayne come in. All right. And of course, SK Telecom T1 loves to solo split push with that Vayne. I was kind of wondering a little bit if we'd see the Vi too from Bengi, but I guess not. Looks like we will see probably a Rumble for Chunju. It is his best champion. Banned against him quite a bit. Yeah, and it did come out in their games against their sister team, Ozone, and Chunju did a very good job of creating nice zones with his Rumble Ultimate, the Equalizer. I'm, I'm excited to see it again. Thresh, speaking of zones, there's the the box maker. The box Thresh. maker. I don't know if that's, that's not, you don't see that in like the champion spotlight. Thresh, the box maker. <laughs> I don't think that's the term. It's not used. intimidating enough. Not really. Well, good, very good early dragon control here for Samsung Blue with Thresh, Elise, and Rumble. So we can expect to see some probably pretty early dragon attempts in this game. And Gragas will be picked oh. up. And Trindamir for impact in the top what? lane. This is a crazy split pushing comp we've got going on right here. Yeah. They're going to have an extremely strong 3-1-1. Faker will be able to clear out the lane if there's a siege with Gragas. And they're going to be able to split push solo lanes with Vayne and Trindamir. This is very aggressive. And in response, they may pick up an assassin, here we go, yeah, an assassin uh, yeah. in order to try and deal with this situation, but it's going to be difficult to no. obviously assassinate that Trindamir. Ziggs would be okay for wave clear on the side lanes, actually. He would be. We've seen we've seen like one good Ziggs, and he did use his ultimate a lot for that. I think that would be an interesting choice. Yeah, the question here, yeah, uh, there's a small possibility it could be a mid lane Trindamir and a top lane Gragas. Uh, we'll have to see how the trades actually work out. I don't think that's going to be the case, but we do have that Fizz pickup right here. I'm not sure that's going to be the correct answer, um, just because, of course, with Trindamir's Undying Rage, can be difficult to assassinate him. But uh, with Ari and Zed banned out, there aren't a whole lot of other choices. Yeah. And this is going to be interesting. We have never seen Impact play Trindamir before. I can't believe we were actually seeing a Trindamir. I mean, that's like, that's kind of a solo queue staple for a lot of regions, well, but not something we see in the pro scene all that much, especially in Korea. Uh, uh, there there have been some examples in the EU and NALCS. Voiboy likes to run that top lane Trindamir from time to time. But the problem is, is that Trindamir is very one dimensional. You are going to split push with him and you're going to yeah. split push hard. See if it works out. There's our lineup for game number two. SK Telecom putting their WCG hopes in the hands of Trindamir, the Barbarian King. That's right. And here we go, guys. The game is loading up. It is time. Can SK Telecom come back and tie up the series for set game three? Or will MVP Blue end the run of the World Championship team? We're about to find out. Do not go anywhere. Tell all your friends to watch as well. WCG Korea, game number two, starting now.
go, guys. Game number two, SK Telecom T1 versus Samsung Blue here on WCG Korea. Our first semifinal match of the Korea National Finals. Well, I really like the composition that we're seeing come out of SK Telecom T1. It is pretty one-dimensional. Um, like I was saying, you you pretty much have to use Trinomir just solely for split pushing. And they have a choice to do the 3-1 split push, 3-1-1 split push rather, with Piglet on Vayne here. But also, uh, Gragas and Vayne have a ton of synergy. You can split up a fight and create mini duels for Vayne to really capitalize on her 1v1 potential after using the explosive cask for disruption. So I really like what we're seeing so far. Gives, uh, gives SK Telecom a couple options into how seriously they want to split push. And if they do 3-1-1, of course, Faker able to wave clear quite easily and the good disengage from Zyra should keep him pretty safe under a turret. Yep. On the other side, Samsung Blue, uh, they're going to have to pretty much all in people under towers in order to stop the split push from being effective. Mm. And I am a bit concerned uh, because Fizz takes a time to ramp up and so does Trindamir, but uh, in the late game and even in the mid game, Fizz is not going to be able to stop that Trindamir split push. So maybe a champion that didn't have such a hard ramp time would have been more ideal here. That vision ward way in the jungle. SK Telecom is kind of interesting from Samsung Blue. Oh, yeah, Samsung Blue, uh, if you remember, this is a team that always has creative level ones. Uh, they yeah. have, back in the day, uh, they always had such a high kill rate at level one. Now, we haven't seen their kind of crazy level ones where they would all flash a wall and wait to brush to kill somebody in a long time, but like it. it's always been, they've always been one of the better teams at level ones here in Korea. Here we go, we're gonna get that 2v2 up in the top lane. Sense taking a little bit of poke from Mondu and Piglet. And that Vayn Zyra lane from Mondu and Piglet, easily one of the most dangerous game lanes in the game right now. You gotta be really careful. You're deft in sense. Okay, well, looks like Bengi is gonna go ahead and try and steal this blue buff right here. It'll be noticed immediately by that ward, but yeah. no big deal because Spirit does have the good warding down on the blue buff of his opponent, so he'll be able to go ahead and get that should he want it. It looks like he's actually going to come over here and contest this blue buff. This is a bit of an interesting path right here taken by Spirit. Yeah. What are we up to? Okay, he already got the blue buff, excuse me, uh, at the level one when they went in. So has the double buffs already. And going to be just wrap around and clear out his golem camp and make sure that that blue buff will get back up as fast as possible. And so far, Manu and Piglet have this top lane pushed up pretty far. You need to be careful, though. They do not want to get that sentence under the turret. Yeah, good eyes so far. On to Bengi. They have a very good idea of where he is in this jungle. And Faker actually not doing too great of a job of shoving Pawn out right here uh, on yeah. matching him in terms of CS. Not getting too much of a zone down and actually Faker allowing the wave to move back towards him. I think he's a little worried about Spirit right now as well. Yeah, wants to have a little bit more room in that mid lane to back off if he needs to. And speaking of Spirit, there he is. He did get spotted by that minion in the front though, yeah. Yeah, they were showing, I bet he did have vision of him just a moment ago. Yeah, he, he was playing He's playing pretty cautiously and he probably wants the lane to go ahead and push back towards him as well so he has higher kill potential onto Fizz when Bengi comes. Yep. And so Faker, just waiting to do a little bit more farming into the turret. Whoa, never mind. Okay, well, not a whole lot of action here so far. Uh, just generally good warding and good ideas of where the enemy junglers are, so they haven't been able to really capitalize on that. Spirit looking for the first gank of the game right here, though. Yeah, impact on the run, though. He knows he's coming. Can they catch him? Their impact activates the ghost. Nice dodge on the cocoon and he's gonna get away. That would have been first blood for sure. Meanwhile, Bengi and Faker coming in, trying to get that first blood on Pawn. Barely can't get him with the barrel. Oh, that was close. That cask almost got Faker a little bit of revenge. Would you say that he barely missed? Barely missed it, yep. And in the bottom lane too, uh, Chunju really telegraphed that gank hard. Uh, Impact knew from his change in behavior. He was uh, previously freezing underneath that 
bot lane turret. Oh, Faker may be in a little bit of trouble here. Spirit jumping onto him, Pawn. There's the Ignite. Faker running away back to the safety of the loving embrace of Lee Sin. That's right. He's safe now. Safe in Lee Sin's arms. That's right. Well, Mondu and Piglet doing a good job of shoving this lane very hard early on, creating that pressure with the plants right underneath that turret. Bengi there, just in case. Spirit tries to take advantage of this shove. Good ward in the tri brush. Bengi smites the golem and heads back around. Were they gonna go after this? Yeah. Death is quite low. Whoa! Oh, meanwhile, first blood taken by Chunju. Chunju just going for the 1v1 right there. Yeah, he got it. Uh, Chunju also hitting level six off of that, not even having to use the equalizer there. That was probably a mistake by Impact, given the state of things in that bottom lane. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. Just it doesn't level six a little bit earlier. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much though. Impact now coming back with a Vamp Scepter. You could die a lot as Trindamir, and as long as you can just continually apply pressure to a lane, you're going to be okay. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, Pawn and Spear pushing back that mid lane now. Pawn doing a surprisingly good job again of farming in this mid lane though. That's going to help him out a lot. So let's I'll check out what happened one, right yeah. here. Impact. Uh, just oh, really yeah. over committing. Just a, uh, I. It, it seems like he just underestimated the amount yeah. of, uh, or overestimated the amount of damage he could do there. He also couldn't heal up very much because yeah. Ignite was down on him. So, I. That looks like a mistake that Impact made because he's not used to playing Trindamir, exactly. not entirely comfortable with the champion yet, not really knowing the limits. Yep. <laughs> Ideally, you get all those deaths because you don't know your champion's limits done before you play in the pro match. Yeah, and look at this too. They know the summoners are down still for Impact. Chunju has his flash up. He also has level six. This might be a pretty easy kill. Spinning Slash is on cooldown. Yeah, they're in trouble. There we go, Impact getting jumped on. Can they get him? He's in a lot of trouble now. Yeah, no escape for Impact at all. Oh, Spinning Slash, uh, sp uh, Spinning Slash, not enough. And at the same time, Piglet goes down. And Mondu, they're gonna get the double. There's the flash, the flash response from Def. A double kill for Def, and he's actually going to escape. But here comes Faker for the revenge kill. Can SK Telecom get their first kill of the game? Oh, oh that is really this tricky. is the death sentence. And yep. Oh, Def. Oh, oh, he denied the kill. Mondu. Faker was so unwilling to use his ultimate right there wow. that he thought he could get it, but look at that. He Whoops. managed to dodge the barrel, dodge everything that Faker had, and therefore Mondu coming up with the kill, Man. and that is not good. In the meantime, just free farm all day. Oh, Sense just jumping on him. There's a box, Thresh 1v1 versus Gragas. Sense needs to make a run for it, though. Nice dodge for the body slam. Wow, what a duel Sense eventually going to be taken out by Faker, I think, here, but. Man, that was some impressive dueling from Sense. Yeah, Bingy. That's what I like to see. And there we go, the tower going to fall in that bot lane. Ping's already going down for Samsung Blue onto this dragon. Yeah. And they will have no problem taking this one. Man, what a series so far for it. Samsung Blue. They're going to get the and first dragon, Impact, no problem. Impact died again in that bot lane as well. Look yeah. at this, they set him up with the equalizer. Oh, yeah. They didn't have to use it during the last fight. They immediately take advantage of that again. And Impact just getting punished here, never hitting level six. He's still only level five, Doa. Yeah, I guess Chunju is level eight. I guess that's one way to shut down a Trinomir, just never let him hit level six. Wow, and there's a dragon already, a 3,000 gold lead for Samsung Blue at nine minutes. This is an incredibly dominant performance by Samsung Blue. Yeah. And props to Pawn, too, for weathering the storm. In the mid lane, two games in a row, he is looking like he's going to get pretty scary right here. Blue buff taken, and Faker and Bengi coming in though. Yeah, oh, impact. And there, they're gonna get the slow on the pawn with that mocking shout. Def in a little bit of trouble, comes in with Thresh though. Def gets another kill. Mondu on the run. Sense gonna help him out with this one. There's a ward to keep the vision in the brush. Really nicely done. He's gonna go down for sure. Meanwhile in the bot lane, goodbye Spirit. Another kill for SK Telecom, pawn. There's the Ignite, the level six finally up. Double, triple, triple kill! No way, Pawn! Pawn is the new faker. I guess that's just <laughs> how this is. Oh, and that is exactly what you don't want to give a fizz at this point. He doesn't uh, even yeah. have his sheen yet. That was some pretty 
terrible positioning from SK Telecom T1 to set themselves up for that playful trickster. They thought they could make the dive, but now at only 10 minutes into this game, it is 10 to three in favor of Samsung Blue is, with a commanding lead. This is absolutely nuts right now. A 2-0-1 Rumble, a 3-0-0 Fizz, 3-1-1 Def. Let's watch that fight the bot lane again. Yeah, taking out Bengi first, and look, Impact getting hit by the tower. Pops is Undying Rage, but again, his healing halved thanks to that Ignite wow. and Faker in the wrong place at the wrong time that underneath actually, the Playful Trickster. That was actually an ace of SK Telecom at like nine minutes, by the way. Oh my, yeah, uh, just cross map kills and Deft, I mean, I said before this match started, he has, has a huge reputation as an Ezreal player here in Korea. Oh, Look at this, Samsung Blue. Again. They're caught, there's the equalizer. Death sentence misses, but I don't think it matters. Goodbye, Piglet. Mondu in a lot of trouble as well, trying to get underneath that turret, but it's not gonna help. Goodbye, Mondu. Chunju. 20 minutes, surrender 20, I guess. This I is don't know. brutal. <laughs> SK Telecom T1 getting absolutely destroyed by Samsung Blue here. Yeah, a lot of frustration on the faces of the SK Telecom players right now. And man, I am so impressed by Samsung Blue. Baker, and look at the response for that playful trickster, man. And they don't even get to play Lucian, which is the champion that really got them here. I yeah. mean, Deft playing so much. Lucian in the earlier qualifier, Samsung Blue takes out yet another turret, and they will keep on moving up in terms of gold. It is looking grim Just for SK Telecom T1. It's going to be a while before they can get any kind of split push going because uh, Impact is so far away from that Blade of the Ruined King right now. I know we were talking about a 2-0 at the start of this uh, cast today, but we weren't exactly talking about it in, in this regard. And I you mean, know what? Yes, SK Telecom. Uh, you, you, back, you, you'd, you'd think we'd learn better by now because yeah, every really, time here in Korea, we're we like, oh man, better. this match is just going to be horribly one-sided. It is either close or, you know, surprising. I feel like KT Bullets taught us that lesson many times, but apparently we still haven't <laughs> learned it. And they grab Faker. Can they capitalize on it? Not quite yet. I love this, though. I, I love that when SK Telecom looks on top of the world, when they win the world championships, we see another team come up. The skill level in this scene is just absolutely astounding. Yeah, and it changes up so frequently, too. Yeah. Uh, teams r tend to rise and fall pretty rapidly. Which is great. I yeah, with very few teams ever able to stay on the top consistently, you know, Frost and Blaze being you know, the two notable exceptions. We were talking about this uh, a couple days ago. We were like, well, it looks like SK Telecom, you know, are we going to have our first, you know, or another like big long standing dynasty here in the Korean scene? And this match really makes you wonder. I mean, no doubt SK Telecom is still one of the strongest teams in the world, but they are just straight up getting outplayed today. Yeah, and they're making mistakes, yes, but Samsung Blue is also just playing very, very well. Yeah. Uh, they're making the proper play calls. Their rotations have been really nice. It's been in more the last, you know, couple or in the two games so far in this series. Yeah, it's been much more Samsung Blue playing well than SK Telecom well, playing bad. It's also we, we talk about a lot of teams can get through the laning phase. You know, that's that's where you pretty much you know, learn the ropes in solo queue. And the real challenge for, for professional teams is closing games and making good rotations in the mid game yeah. and being able to take that advantage and run away with it. And Samsung Blue is demonstrating a very good ability to do that here today. Yeah, they are snowballing this game pretty adequately. Well, I <laughs> I don't know, what do you say after a first 13 minutes of a game like this? And Bengi, you can tell too, he's actually deviated from his normal Boots of Mobility build here because he needs that extra tankiness. He's just not able to make the plays on the lanes this game. And so he's got to do something else instead. So yeah. a little bit of an adaptation here from the T1 jungler. And even Piglet, who is typically rock solid, 0-3-0, zero, zero. and they're going to jump onto Chunju. He's going to get back under turret. Not able to get that kill. And here we go, 14 minute Lich Bane on Fizz. That is not something you see that often. Typically, no. uh, Fizz is pretty good if he gets one at 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. But this time around with those three kills and having equal farm to Faker's Gragas, he is just on a roll. Yep. And can they get this turret? The Siege coming in. Looks like they won't quite be able to get it right now, but 
see if that happens in the near future. A lot of damage coming in on the Mandu from that two-shot barrage. Yeah, they're playing this very conservatively as well. You can yeah. see Fizz not using any of his abilities right there to get the Lich Bane procs off onto the turret. Very cautious play, but even so, they get the, the tier two down to about one-third health and now are changing up to the mid lane. Well, we're seeing a you know a different kind of game from Samsung Blue, and, but they're still playing it near perfectly with a, with a comp like this. Just very, very aggressive early on. You get that lead, and then you keep it by switching over to a very safe, methodical mid game. I love it. This is yeah, this and is a beautiful League of Legends we're seeing here. It is, and Chunju still in that bot lane, just calmly stopping that split push Why of Trindamir. Normally, you wouldn't be able to stop a Trindamir split push with a Rumble, but you can when you're three zero and two. Yep. Yep. Dragging up as well. Looks like they're going to be rotating over to take that one. Yeah, there, there's no way that SK Telecom T1 can contest this. Yeah. It's going to die way too quick either way. Even if they want to get there in time, they can't. And suddenly, the gold lead extends to 8,000 in favor of Samsung Blue in 16 minutes. Well, I'm surprised. Are you surprised? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, I, if I had to describe my feelings right now, I think surprise might be one of the <laughs> top feelings on the list. Yeah. Mind boggled, astounded. Those are also feelings that I'm feeling right now. I kind of feel bad for the feelings that SK Telecom is feeling at the moment. Can't be fun. No. But Faker at least going to get a blue buff right here, and Piglet. Yeah. So there's that. Very close to his blade, and that'll help him out once he gets it to be able to duel this Ezreal just a little bit better and deal with yeah. the Fizz, too, if the Fizz comes to. Well, it's still going to be a, a team that Samsung Blue needs to take seriously. It's, there's still a lot of strength in these champions from SK Telecom, but it's a lot to overcome. Yeah, and that said, yes, there's 7K gold down, but this split push is so scary that if it gets rolling for SK Telecom T1, they will be a threat in this game if they yeah. can start getting oh, some objectives. Oh, but if Mandu gets grabbed, that's not gonna help. There's a box to secure it, and Sense, oh, they actually don't get it quite yet. No way he got out. And they're gonna have to back off. That is luckiest plant ever. Quan misses with that ultimate, too. Well, again, they don't really want to overcommit right there. They Absolutely. thought they could get a catch. A little bit of mind games with the ward waiting for Mandu to come and try and clear. Yeah. All right, well, everybody backs off. No harm, no foul, I guess. And a turret being taken. That Trinomir is starting to become a little bit of a bully. He does have his play to the Rune King. Yeah, this is the point where Chunju has to be a lot more careful right now, and Samsung Blue has to change up their strategy a little bit. And they, they're getting close to needing to start grouping and diving. Now, Pawn still doesn't have boots. He opted for that needlessly large rod instead, which is a little disconcerting. Um, he is going to need some of that speed if he wants to get around the map to create picks or to dive under turrets. I'm not sure that was the best option in this situation. Now they're going to try to catch impact, but that's not going to work. Yeah, and you're certainly, I mean, you're not going to catch champions without boots, especially when you're talking about Vayne, Trindamir, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lee Sin, and Gragas. Uh, not exactly Gragas. the least mobile champions out there. Yeah, so pretty much in this c case, his only option is to get a, a pick and a brush by having somebody face it. Yep. Oh, they do catch Chunju, though. Dropping the equalizer doesn't help. Bengi flashing over the wall. Chunju not. Oh, nice play from Sense. Really good. And then the death sentence. He saves him. Chunju. Oh, he can't back off Mandu coming in from behind. That's some pretty huge that shutdown nice gold right there. They are closing yeah. that gap slowly, and that'll be really important for this Trindamir. And like I said, this is the time where Chunju really needs to stop doing that. And Piglet is split pushing as well. They're getting into that phase of the game. Def gonna go ahead and try and two true shot barrage the minion wave, but it's not going to save the turret. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're down to 5k gold here. Interesting. So they are doing the 3 one, one split push, like I suspected, and they are using this. But Def, they may be Whoa. too fed to stop it as Mandu just so. bites the dust. Not a lot that you can do against that. Ezreal just walks up and takes out Zyra. And that's still going to be a 3-2 to two turret lead. So what do you do right here if you're Samsung Blue? They need to get their, their act back together. Need, they need to start moving around as five yeah. at this point in time. Because stopping impact, this is a great decision oh, from yeah. Samsung Blue. They've got the bear in control. And even though we're still at sub 20 minutes, this is what they need to do. And with uh, Shunju in that bottom lane, I guarantee you SKT is not thinking about a Baron right now. Oh, I think they are. They're the oh, dwarves coming they down. They see it now. Uh -huh. 
but it's going to die before they can get there. They should get it. Baker trying to get there in time. Nice box. Steal it. Very nice. Good zone there. Yeah, covering that entire ramp yep. to make sure oh, there was Baker no... Baker gets jumped on. There we go. Explosive cast pushing Pawn away. In the meantime, oh, he actually gets it. Baker with the kill. And that's where you want boots, Noah. Yep, pretty much. Hard to find boots that fit Fizz, though. That is something to consider. Yeah. He's got those, like, sort of Flippers. amphibian feet. Yep. <laughs> Can't blame him. Yeah, good use of equalizer, though, to get him off the turret. However, Pawn finally picking up some boots here. That'll give him oh, a little bit yeah. of help. Wow, Piglet going nuts. Yeah, no kidding. Nearly dies to the turret right there. They got to be careful. Depth is doing a ton of damage. Oh, impact in trouble. Has to pop the ultimate to stay alive there. And now we've got a good push coming from Samsung Blue. A lot of low health members on SK Telecom. They need to be careful. Yeah, they do. Pawn now coming out and returning to the lane. So Samsung Blue taking over control of that jungle again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, the Baron call was a really good one from Samsung Blue right there. Oh, definitely. When you're dealing with this for pushing situation, you've got to do the five man objectives. Uh, to counteract that pressure. And that'll just give them a lot more siege and diving potential here moving forward, which is exactly what they need. They could grab a dragon here fairly soon if they want to. It's going to be up in just a little bit, but for now, grouping up in that mid lane, aside from Chunju is again pushing that bottom lane before recalling. Yeah, look at this too. They're just trying to power up Piglet right now. Yeah. He's been farming empty lanes for most of this game so far as he struggles to get some items. It's going to be tough to catch him back. He should be able to get out of this unless he gets hit by the cocoon. Is he going to? There's the sweat. Oh, dodges the death sentence. The cocoon connects, though. There's the flame bringing him in. Pawn going in on everything there. Faker can't do anything about it. Yeah, it's so worth it to trade to uh, trade your support, though, to stop oh, yeah. that split push from Trindamir. Uh, we see Impact going for that static shift next, of course, just to give him that extra little pushing power. Yep. Stuff. Yeah, Chunju going for the Abyssal Scepter next, and that's going to be extra nasty. Piglet! Oh, Equalizer comes out. Piglet a little bit caught here. Nice condemn. Pushes back Pawn. They're going to go in on a Binky, though. Trisha Barrage coming down. They get that catch. And this 2 2 turret taking a little bit of damage. The siege broken, but not before they lose another member. Now, this is excellent play from Samsung Blue. Again, this is how you stop the split push. You constantly just go ahead, dive those turrets, take somebody out, and keep make sure that the lanes are pushed. They took out the main split pusher. He does have static shift now, so he's getting scarier. But even so, Samsung Blue, with some great play calling here, just, just shut down the team composition threat from SK Telecom T1. Yeah. Piglet still with no kills in this game. 0-3-0. Zero, zero. And 30 CS down. It's been a tough game for him. Yeah, so Samsung Blue got, has the lane push in their favor right now. This will give them some time to go back and spend the gold from the kills that they got before reapplying pressure. And if they can constantly five-man the Trindamir, yeah. they'll be in really good shape. In fact, not even split pushing right now. No. Just kind of hanging out. Doesn't want to get that nice, clean uniform messy. He does look rather regal. He does. It's true. Man, the Mystic shots coming out of depth are going to be doing so much damage right now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty disgusting. Well, it's looking grim for SK Telecom T1. It is. The split push has been neutralized for now, anyway. Yeah, they have to be very careful, of course, about this early Baron buff. Chun -Gyu. Going back into that bottom lane, and Impact will respond by trying to shove out top. Yeah, they may just want to even be for a moment while they push mid. We'll see. Yeah, so the problem for Samsung Blue right now is that these base turrets are very strong. And it will be, or the second turrets rather, it will be difficult this early in the game to dive as effectively because they don't have the levels in items yeah. quite yet in order to be that effective or that tanky underneath the turrets. Um, and their comp is actually quite bad at sieging. It's really only good at diving with, with Rumble and Fizz. Um, you want to use the Equalizer to get the damage on and then follow up with the Fizz, but right. they're able to zone out right there. Nice use coming from behind. Yeah, they'll get that turret either way, just kind of muscling their way into there. Yeah, that's, that was a really good decision, but Impact on a roll with a big minion wave up in the top lane. They're going to try and base race it probably. It's really their only hope. Yeah, they really need to get this inhibitor. We'll see if they can. 
we go, explosive cast, push the spirit away, aside from that, not doing a whole lot. Piglet gets jumped on, Def getting that kill as well. Actually, they grab Gragas as well, Faker in big trouble, gets out of the box, but he's still so low, Def going in for that kill. Chunju steals it though, and that is gonna be a turret, and probably an inhibitor as well as Mondu goes down. Oh boy. Yeah, Impact still just split pushing the top lane. If they can trade inhibitor for inhibitor, there are worse things. And actually, Impact is, is winning time. is winning the inhibitor race right now. Yeah, really nice. I mean, the fight bought SK Telecom some time, and they're going to trade inhibitor for inhibitor, it looks like. Yeah, this is definitely A-OK -okay for SK Telecom T1. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting game. Even with the oh, yeah. massive gold lead, SK Telecom T1 still at least keeping themselves in the game. It's one of the frustrating things about playing against the Trindomir. Yeah. He is one dimensional, but he is really good in that one dimension. Yeah, that one dimension is pretty strong. And he's going to leave a ward there and just go ahead and back. Yeah, smart move. We'll see how much gold he's managed to pick up and what his next item is going to be. What a game. All right, let's take a look at that fight. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly it. You just need to get the dives in right Ooh. there. Oh, Spirit. Uh, max wow. range, Zyra passive. Nice. For the kill. That's awesome. All right, well, lanes getting pushed back by Samsung Blue now. Yeah, 30 seconds of Dolbaron, and SK Telecom right. T1 has the vision advantage right now. Yep. They were smart to use the, their time right after getting up in order to take that out. Um, but it'll be cleared relatively quickly right there. Some poke from Faker. Faker at least has gotten a lot of farm this game and a couple of kills, so he does have that death cap already. His damage pretty significant. Yep. They try to protect that vision ward. Oh, Def gets caught a little bit. Can they get the kill? There's the, the armor going down. Cleanse from Piglet doesn't help. Def is just so strong right now. Yeah, Piglet cannot duel Def. He's 0 5 0 now yeah. against a 7 1 4 Ezreal. Yeah, especially with the Blade of the Ruin King that Def picked up as well, yeah. which is really smart because that's an answer to the split pushing the game. Yep. Oh, Pawn fighting impact. He's going to have to back off. Uses that ult. Disengage a bit. Yeah, Pawn is not the man who's going to be able to stop this split push, that's no. for sure. I mean, really, there's nobody who can at this point. Yeah. They just have to push harder. Well, then we'll see if they can get the Baron. So well, okay. with Piglet coming back up so soon, fortunately, he's not very high in terms of levels yet. Yeah. Now, Pawn can clear the wave, but... And he does have super Pawn needs self, to be though. very careful about this, however, because yeah, he, does. uh, he doesn't have it all. Oh, impact at all impact. in him. There's the Sonya's. All right, they're actually waiting for Spirit. There we go, he flashes. Gets a slow on the impact. There's the Cocoon. Can they take him out? Impact gets his ultimate popped in. Bengi coming in. There's the Repel. And they're going to come down again. Impact trying to get away. They do stop the split push, though. No Baron, though, for Samsung Blue during all that. No, they they had to. That's the problem with this Trindabir, though, is that they have to commit multiple champions in order to stop him. Yeah. And even then, he's just going to life steal back up with that Blade of the Ruined King on every wave. And it's incredibly annoying how many summoners, how many ultimates you have to use in order to shut him down. Yep. Already gaining that health back. Man, what a close game. Yeah, it's funny that we're Another saying one. what a close game with a 10k gold difference, but this is, you know, gold difference isn't everything in League of Legends, and it comes down to how is that gold used, who has it, and what kind of composition are you running? And even 10k gold behind, Trindamir in a split push situation is going to be a thorn in your side, as we're seeing right now. Oh, yeah. And actually, to be fair, Impact has nearly as much gold as Chunju does. He's only about a K behind. Yep. Okay, well, he's coming back. He's nearly got that last Whisper as well. And once he gets that, it's going to be even harder for Pawn to stop him. That Sonya's Hourglass not going to be doing much. Nope. Just delaying the inevitable, really. Okay, well, Pong coming back down. He's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe again. He knows that Undying Rage is still on cooldown, and that is going to For make now. Impact a little more reluctant. Ooh, sense coming down as well. Can they get the death sentence here? Piglet is there, as well as Bengi. Yeah, they need to be really careful not to go in on that one. And just using the, the chicken yell. Yep. Poultry shout. Poultry shout. Which came first, Trindomir or his chicken <laughs> shout? <laughs> And another dragon being taken by Samsung Blue. So they do maintain that gold lead for the most part, at least. 
Yeah, the longer SK Telecom T1 can stretch this one out, the better they're, they're going to be in a really good position. So yep. Samsung Blue has to be a little bit more aggressive about closing this game at this point in time. Uh, they need to just keep diving, keep that five-man going, and stop worrying so much. Yep. Now they are taking control over that Baron pit again, and they may choose the five-man Baron. Well, we'll see. Coming in, there's the explosive cast. They try to jump onto Faker, and they will catch him. There's the ultimate for Quan as well. Faker not quite able to take out Spirit. Yeah, getting caught there in the mid lane, but that's not going to stop the pushing. And Trinity are able to push through the super creep waves yeah. in order to take out another turret. Insane. They're just going to go right for Baron on this one. Chunju trying to stop him. He's going to be able to clear the wave, but it's five turrets to five right now. Mangi coming over the wall. There's the box. They do get a kill on him. Mandu in big trouble as well. This could mean a big, strong push coming in yeah, for Samsung big. Blue. I really would have preferred to see Caitlyn this game, uh, but. We're not going to get it. An impact Whoa. getting low. That Ryla is doing a lot yeah. of work on this rumble. Impact. Oh, oh he needs to run. There's a flash over the wall. He gets him. Nice duel from Chunju. And a Baron being taken. Speared very low health right now. This may not be the best Baron idea ever. It looks like it'll barely go down, though. Ooh, that was a close one. Yeah, but with so many members, except for Piglet down, everyone on SK Telecom T1 dead, that will be another Baron, and they will have a really good opportunity here just to clear out their base. Their inhibitor yeah. is back up, and then they can go and just five-man SK Telecom T1. They have a good, good window of opportunity right now. You know, it all comes down to that rumble that got the really good lead against Trindamir in the early game. He's been able to stay ahead enough on items all game. Go toe to toe with him. Yeah, that Rylai's was absolutely critical to yep. winning that duel right there. Able to keep Trindamir burning on top of the equalizer, especially with that Leandri's torment as well. Yep. And here we go. Pawn heading back, healing up. He's got the home guard boots and zips out into the lane. Right, try to push that one up a little bit. It's already pushed up, but more the merrier, I guess. And in the meantime, here to mentor it. Well, Samsung Blue needs to be much more decisive right now. I don't. They're a bit too spread out. Yes, they are. Uh, with this Baron buff. I mean, getting the blue is all nice and well. Chunju clearing out the creep wave top is all nice and well, oh. especially since Impact's going to be there also. But. You know, there's a difference too between being methodical and being overly passive. And I feel like. Samsung Blue has kind of gone over that line, you know? Yeah, they have they have a good reason to be cautious uh, because SK Telecom is still in this game, yeah. but uh, they are they are being a little overly cautious. Impact wants this again. He's going in with the Ghost. Chunju a little bit caught here. He's on the run now. There's the slow. There's the equalizer, but I don't think he's getting away from this one. He's going to try it. Chunju not quite make it. Oh, he actually makes it out because of the lantern. Are you kidding me? And Pawn with a huge wow. burst as well. Impact didn't see it coming. He couldn't. He didn't even have time he to pop his, his ultimate right there because he died so very quickly. That was incredible. And here we go. Oh, they catch Bengi with the ultimate. A little bit of damage on the him. It's going to help that siege. Baker getting ready to throw some barrels, throw some casts. Well, uh, Samsung Blue, they do have that open inhibitor right now. One wonders if they can do a little more sieging uh, in another lane. Def doesn't even care anymore. He's just going to face tank a turret all by himself. So yeah, he's going to be fine. And look and at SK now. Telecom is terrified. They they absolutely. They should be. Uh, oh, they get Mondu. Mondu in big trouble. Gets evaporated. Piglet on the run as well. Baker needs to back off the inhibitor. Very low. Spirit a bit low on health as well. There's the box sense. Bringing him in. Nice explosive cast. Sends in trouble. Def taking some damage from the turrets from the Nexus. Actually, Pawn. Yeah, so Piglet. Is. Piglet won the duel right there with yeah. Def as well. So SK Telecom uh -oh. trying to push out of this base. Lantern ride for uh, Chunchu. Spirit sets quite low, however. Impact on the warpath. Yeah, they're going to see if they can get that ult out of impact, but they don't quite get him low enough. Well, they did get another inhibitor there, so. They did, yeah. Didn't and a two for two trade. Could have been worse. Yeah, Samsung Blue still doing fine. And look at that ward coverage, too. All oh, through. Oh, Chunju. Oh, this could be terrible. Yeah, there's the equalizer. There's nothing you can do. Oh, except at least it kicks him over the wall, I guess. Oh, no way. Impact getting slowed. Can he catch him? Can he catch him? Bengi's so low. 
He's gonna live. Tunju, not so lucky. Bit of a crazy fight, but in the end, Impact comes up with the kill. Yeah, shut down gold there as well for Impact. So yeah. that's going to cause Samsung Blue items. to lose a lot of pressure in this game. And now SK Telecom T1, in spite of losing another inhibitor, they have, they keep getting more opportunities here. Yep. MVP Blue, we are seeing a little bit of a weakness. Let's watch that fight in the base. Yeah, watch Piglet right here too. So Mondu gets destroyed instantly, and uh, Figure able to put some damage down right there. Piglet's going to be kiting backwards against Death right there. Pops his ultimate, Death hits him with the Blade of the Ruined King, but he what? manages to a barely duel. survive. Beautiful mechanics from Piglet on the side of that fight. That was one of the best vein mechanics fights I think I've ever seen. Oh, Impact in a little bit of trouble here. Pops his ultimate. Gonna try to get some kills in there before he goes down, but it looks like he's gonna have to make it out. Gonna have to run. He's gonna be fine, though. Yeah, does manage to barely survive with a sliver right there. You know, and a nice route onto death, preventing that pursuit. Just wanna go Whoop. back to that last fight one more time real quick, because we saw uh, Piglet get a really amazing condemn on the pawn as he came in, too, and that's what allowed him to even get a chance to duel death. Yeah, really, really nice. And the Hexdrinker now down. On to Piglet, trying to deal with some of that damage coming out of Fizz and Rumble. Yep. And we, <laughs> Mercurial Scimitar finished for Deft as well. Doesn't want to get hit by any of that Zyra CC. Oh no. Can't blame him. Oh, Bengi, you picked the wrong Golems to go after. There's Repel. I don't think Bengi's getting out of that one. Nope, Death Sentence secures that kill. Whoops. That was just a little bit of a mix up map awareness from Bengi there. Samsung Blue going for the naked inhibitor right now. Should yep. be Good idea. easy business in order for them to finish out this game at this point. Yep. And can they take it? No ultimate yet for impact. It's going to be up in just a couple seconds, but the inhibitor is going to be dead long before that happens. And they do get it. Pawn actually condemned against the wall, but no follow-up. Ult is up for impact now. Uh, they are just trying to wait this one out. They need Bengi back up. 15 long seconds to go, however. Yeah. And Def just going to stroll right by that barrel. Yeah, they can head back to that tier two tower, tower in the mid lane. And can SK Telecom get there in time to save it? I don't know. There's a cocoon. They wrap up Baker. A little bit of damage there. And yeah, they'll just continue to take objectives. SK Telecom, two inhibitors down now. Yeah, what they're going to do now, I mean, they can just stroll through, take the red buff, go back by, and then set up for another Baron. Yep. So, if Samsung Blue plays this one out logically, they should be heading to the finals here of WCG Korea in a stunning upset. Oh, no kidding. Stunning doesn't begin to describe it. I mean, this is SK Telecom team that, you know, less than a month ago now, Won the world championship. Try try like 10 days ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Way less than a month ago. All right, well, buffs are secured. Pawn grabs the blue, hops over the wall, and the Baron setup will commence as soon as we can see Sense getting there with an Oracles. And wow, he is just loaded on that support, finishing Shirelia's Reverie as we reach Nearly the 40 minute mark in this game. Yeah. And Shirelia's is a pretty good buy. Definitely want to be able to disengage a little bit. Outrun that Trinamera if you need to. There's the Baron. Yeah. Going down for Samsung Blue. MVP Blue. Or uh, Samsung Blue, rather. I'm doing it too. I know, man. It's, it's hard not to. Yeah, Blue. They've been MVP for so long. Able to take that so quickly. They just have a I tremendous amount of damage right easy. now. Yeah. It's like if the Green Bay Packers suddenly became like the Milwaukee Packers. I could never handle that. Oh, Faker nearly grabbed by the death sentence. Guess I'd have to go back in time. Okay, well, some at least good zoning here. And the top inhibitor is back up. So Samsung Blue rightfully going to go ahead and rotate over. Yep, to the side. Ooh, lots of damage onto him. That's going to be another dead inhibitor. No problem. And there it is, they actually get the ult on the Mondu. Playful Trickster coming in, and there's the Zonius after Pawn gets the kill. Impact jumps on top of Baker right there as well. Another Zonius from Chunju. Zonius all over the place. Impact pops the ultimate, just trying to get as much damage done as he can, and it's quite a bit, but not enough. And there we go, Bengi, nearly the last man standing. Now it's Faker, that is it, appropriately. Faker, the last man standing, the last wall, the last line of defense, but ultimately, it is going to be a 2-0 for Samsung Blue. They defeat the League of Legends Season 3 World Champions in style. Wow.
That is, is this real life? An insane <laughs> upset here at WCG Korea. Yeah. 2 0 from Samsung Blue, a team that is historically done quite poorly in champions, but showing that they've used the offseason to the utmost. I guess and so. their roster changes have been very effective. Pawn with an insanely strong showing in the mid lane against Faker. Wow. Man, that was really, really impressive. And uh, again, just stunned looks on the faces of SK Telecom. They don't know how to handle it. Well, you can't blame them. They will not be representing Korea. No, I guess not. <laughs> at the World Cyber Games, and maybe it'll be Samsung Blue. Wouldn't that be a shocker? I uh, well, I don't know. I mean, think about the season where we saw MVP Ozone come up out of seemingly nowhere, take out Blaze in the finals. I feel like we're seeing something a bit similar here from their sister team, Blue. Well, and remember too, again, Samsung Blue has now defeated both SK Telecom T1 and the KT Bullets, generally thought yeah. of heading into this tournament as the two strongest teams here in Korea. And they've completed the one-two punch and they deserve their ticket to the finals. No kidding, I am just incredibly impressed by these guys, Pawn especially. I mean, the whole team played so well, such good coordination. Well, they successfully summon Captain Planet, I would say. I guess so, yeah, by their powers combined. They are Captain Planet. And the planet is 